Good morning and welcome to Christ Church, Valdosta. It's a pleasure to have you here with us this morning, worshiping our Lord on this, the second Sunday in the season of Epiphany. And for those of you who are watching, welcome. And for those of you who will watch later, also a warm words of welcome. Today we will celebrate the Holy Eucharist according to Rite 2, which is found on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hymn 477, verses 1, 3, and 5. Gloria is found on page S280 of the hymnal, the Gloria. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, 
whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. Grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you call me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. The Psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 139 verses 1 through 5 and 12 through 17. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are not acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in a secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes before my limbs, yet unfinished in the wounds. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, you would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are, <clears throat> are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us by his power. 
Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? <clears throat> Should I therefore take them members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body. But the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hymn 324, 324. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? 
Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. I am fortunate that there have been many times in my life where I have been in the presence of someone who just really wowed me. Call it charisma, charm, adulation, style, presence, talent, appearance, aura, grace. Whatever it is, or whatever combination of those things, those times and those people stand out for me, and I hope that you have had similar experiences where you are in the presence of someone who just simply rocked your world. As our opening collect puts it so very clearly, God's people who are illumined shine with the radiance of Christ's glory. And just maybe it is during those moments when we're with people who are shining with Christ's glory that we feel very, very close to Christ himself. The last church where I officiated as an assisting priest was St. Mary the Virgin Episcopal Church in Times Square. It was a marvelous nine years in my life as an Episcopal priest. And several years ago at the solemn mass on the eve of the epiphany, I ended up walking behind Bishop Mary Glasspool during the recessional hymn. Bishop Glasspool is the, an assisting bishop in the Diocese of New York, and her episcopacy has been anything but mild and boring. And I was fortunate to walk behind her during the closing hymn because I had served as her assistant at Mass, and I loved it, because I was able to watch the reaction of the congregation to her as she gradually processed out. And the faithful were bowing or kneeling to receive her Episcopal blessing as she tapped, tapped, tapped her crozier down the aisle. Several even reached out just to touch her, and she took her time looking at the loving congregation closely, each one who was looking at her, lovingly receiving the adulation of all. It was simply an impressive presence. The next year in 2018, I was watching the Golden Globes award show with several friends. Well, not really. Admittedly, I wasn't really interested in the show, and so I kept going in and out of the room where the TV continued its parade of poor acceptance speeches. Blah, blah, blah. But I took notice when Reese Witherspoon took the stage to introduce Oprah Winfrey, or just Oprah, who was the winner of the Cecil B. DeMille Award. As a personal aside, I like Reese Witherspoon. Reese was partly raised in Nashville, Tennessee, where I worked for many, many years. Her mother, as a matter of fact, was a professor of pediatric nursing at Vanderbilt University School of Nursing. But back to the Globes. I commented to my friends that Oprah looked fantastic as she ascended the stage to accept the award for lifetime achievement. 
By the way, if you get the time and you want to check out her acceptance speech, it is on YouTube. And for the next nine minutes, I was simply spellbound. As Oprah spoke, the camera would pan out to the celebrities in the audience, each one as starstruck as I was. They were amazed at her command of the stage, her articulate and powerful words, her sincerity and truthfulness. Oprah commanded that stage and her presence illuminated the auditorium. I could go on and on about many of my life crushes, like the time I went to a Tina Turner concert in Atlanta and watched as she ran up and down a tiny catwalk in her heels on an extended mechanical arm without guide rails that was projected high over the audience. Or the time when Bishop Tutu preached a graduation sermon at Sewanee that I will never forget. But I'll spare you and I'll move on because I haven't, I hope that I haven't already bored you to tears. But with all of that as a segue, let me now say that our Lord Jesus had to have had an incredible sense of presence about him. You now know what I'm talking about when I say that aura, that presence, that sense of being. What was it about Jesus that caused people to believe in him and follow him and leave everything behind in order to do so? They literally threw down their nets for him, leaped out of boats for him, tossed the tax books aside. We don't know and never could know the dynamics that were present, but what we do know is that there was something about this man named Jesus that drew people to him. He was unforgettable. Today we learn that Philip followed Jesus straight away and then told Nathaniel, we have found the one promised in the Old Testament. And when Nathaniel expressed skepticism about anything good coming out of Jesus' hometown of Nazareth, Philip simply says, come and see. Nathaniel cynically wondered how a Messiah could come from that little podunk town of Nazareth. Nazareth didn't have a particularly good reputation at the time. But when Jesus tells Nathanael that he noticed him when he was under the fig tree, Nathanael was so impressed that he impetuously calls Jesus the Son of God and King of Israel, two of the seven titles given to Jesus in this gospel. Jesus' response to Nathanael is interesting. The passage reads, when Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you come to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree. Two things, the first has to do with that word see. There are different Greek words in the Bible for our one English word, see. Philip had said to Nathaniel, come and see. And the Greek word he used for see had to do with the use of the eyes to look and then see something. But twice the word see is used by Jesus in this passage. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming toward him and Jesus says, I saw you under the fig tree. On both of those occasions, there is a different Greek word for to see used than the one that Philip used. And on both of those occasions, the word has nothing to do with physical sight through the eyes, but instead speaks of spiritual perception. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming towards him. That is to say, he saw into Nathanael's heart as he approached and recognized him for who he truly was. That alone would serve to grab your attention. 
because you and I know it when someone is looking into your soul while looking into your eyes. Without doubt, there is something about Jesus that captured others. The Gospels tell us that he taught as one having authority. British biblical scholar J.B. Phillips states that there was something magnetic about his person that immediately affected those with whom he came in contact. We can recall many instances in the Gospels where Jesus had a profound, life-changing effect on the people that he met. Examples, the Canaanite woman, the blind man at Bethsaida, the Roman centurion, the woman at the Pharisee's home, Zacchaeus, the woman at the well, the sick man at the Bethesda pool, the thief crucified next to Jesus, and the centurion at the foot of the cross, to name only a few. The people who met Jesus were forever changed. Whatever their deepest need was, Jesus met it. And then they went on to tell others what had happened to them. Come and see. And that's how it has worked ever since. It's relational, person to person. People become Christians because they have seen what the Christian faith has done for their fellow human being. The saying passed down from the early years of the church still rings true. See those Christians? See how they love one another. But not to worry. Our task as Christians has never been to prove the truth of the Christian faith, although many scholars have attempted just that, our task is not even to persuade others to become Christian. Our joyful task is to simply say, come and see. Nathaniel came and he saw for himself and what he saw forever changed his life. Allow me to close with a small additional observation based on today's gospel. Thankfully, the Lord God Almighty does not see things as we see them. God's vision is deeper, wider, and more accurate, and that is the vision to which Jesus calls us. Recall that Nathaniel cynically replies, Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathaniel had assumptions about Nazareth, and we make similar such assumptions whenever we believe something can never change or will never get better or can never be filled with courage, hope, or creativity. I say this because many of us in this country right now, about now, are living in fear or worry, dread, confusion, you name it. Many of the assumptions that we make entail a limitation and a narrowing of our vision or the squandering of the hope that is so desperately needed. There are many, many toxic assumptions in play right now. Assumptions narrow our vision and deny the possibility of reconciliation, healing, a different way of being, or even a new way to live. Assumptions are hiding places that keep us from engaging life. But God works in people and places that we least expect. Over and over again, God takes the ordinary, the fallible, and does great things. We are each created with great potential to be an instrument of God's love and peace. Sometimes it is hard to see how anything good can come out of Nazareth. But Nazareth was the place chosen by God to reveal himself. For every Nazareth in our life, there is the grace-filled invitation to come and see. So, good people of God, today take heart, because we come and we see, and that just may be the greatest gift of epiphany. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Standing, let us say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God.
Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to Christ Church. Once again, let me welcome you to this, the second Sunday in Epiphany. And I make a promise to you, at some point in time over the next few weeks, I'm going to get the order of service to correct. <laughs> I, I missed a few of the uh, steps at the beginning of the service. My apologies. It won't happen again next week. Each week I learn a little bit more about um, what we're doing in front of the camera here and um, virtually. And it takes a little while to get used to all that. Give us, give us all a, a chance to do that. I really miss being with people for in-person worship. As you know, we had both an 8 and a 12 noon service where we did allow people into this wonderful church to socially distance, to wear masks, to sanitize at the proper times, and we did all of those things. With the new guidelines from the diocese, we not only look at our own county, but the counties that surround us and their numbers, in case those numbers mean that we have to absorb some of those who may not be capable of being absorbed in hospitals or ICUs in surrounding counties. So we're in a separate set of um, statistics here than what you might see for the city alone. We keep a good track on that, and it is our hope that we will move into what's called the orange phase. There's yellow, orange, red, and deep red. And each of those have implications for the ways in which we worship, we carry on with each other, etc. Follow guidelines by the CDC. And we're hoping that we will move from red to orange, which would allow us, at a two-week time frame, to be able to once again reassemble for in-person worship. So we will check on these things at the beginning of each week coming forward, and we'll keep you apprised. In the meantime, it is so good to be able to do this with the technology of live streaming. It is such a gift, and I thank everyone that has a part in this to be able to reach you. With the Holy Eucharist, we will use Prayer A, Eucharistic Prayer A, which is found on page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer, 361. Let us with gladness present the offerings of our lives and our labors to the Lord our God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Lord, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
For those who cannot be present at this Eucharist, let us say together the prayer for spiritual communion. In union, dear Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let me never be separated from you. Let me live and die in your love. prayer of thanksgiving is found in the prayer book on page 365. Page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. A prayer for our country. Lord God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look now with compassion on the entire human family and particularly on this part of the family in the United States and those in our nation's capital, particularly this coming week. Take away the divisions which infect our hearts, break down the walls that separate us, Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggles and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hymn 535.
May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may shine and be a light to the world. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.